Okay, so I'm going to click record. So hey guys, thanks for jumping onto the recording. We are doing our Forex basics, our skills and drills for the day. And we're going to be doing trading view, ladies and gents, and going into MetaTrader 4 as well. So this is really helpful for those of you who are brand new and maybe you haven't had a chance to work your way around um, trading view just yet. We're going to be doing that a little bit later on in the session. So if you are excited, please make sure you've got your pens and papers ready because note takers are the money makers. So make sure you are ready. Who is fired up for this call? Who is ready to not only go over the things you already know, but maybe learn something new? Put a 777 in the chat box if you are ready to go because I am nice. Sweet. We are ready. Guys, we are fired up today. Nice. Cool. Okay. So for those of you who are brand, brand new and do not know who I am, my name is Jessica and I started my trading journey only nine months ago. So I'm still only a year in, I'm still a baby. Um, but first and foremost, I am a dancer and choreographer. So <laughs> ballet and contemporary is my first love. Um, and I realized during uni that, you know, dancing wasn't really going to pay too much of my life. So I had to like find different hustles to keep me afloat basically. So I became a YouTuber doing, doing some Afro hair tutorials, right? I also was a teacher and a lecturer. I still do that as well. And I'm also currently a performing stunt artist. So you may have seen me in a couple of films. Um, but alongside all of those things, I've also been a digital marketing strategist. So using Instagram, because hashtag Insta is life, to make money. So having done all these hustles over the years, I kind of like to think that I knew my way around the money books. And then I became a homeowner because of all of these things. However, as soon as I actually got my property, I was made redundant and I had to find something to pay for my lifestyle, to pay for my house, to pay for everything, right? And that is when trading presented itself to me as an option. And um, the girl who introduced me is on this call. So I always say it, thank you so much for introducing me to this life. Um, and to be honest, guys, I've never looked back. So if you are here, if you're on this call and you've taken the step to you know, change your situation, then congratulations first and foremost, keep going. It's a long road. I'm nine months in, I've had the ups, I've had the downs, but you will get through the other side and life is sweet when you do hit those consistent profits. I promise you, you've just got to stick at it, okay? So in terms of, you know, we've, we've started, we're new, what is the plan here? We're learning this skill, but what is it that you're actually wanting to do with this skill? Well, with proper risk management, the plan is to double your account every month. There's no reason why we can't be doing that. And the only thing that's gonna stop us is if we're not consistent with our trading strategy or our rules, okay? So let's say in month one, you only start with 100 pounds in your account, okay? The point is you could be making 5% increase every single day. So what is your delta? What is your, um, your, your trading journal allowing you? What is your financial goal and how quickly do you want to hit it, right? So what we do is we compound our account size every single day, 3%, 5%, whatever. Whatever works for you. I tend to go for numbers that aren't really too aggressive. I'm a very safe trader. I don't like taking big risks. And it means that I'm more profitable in the long term, right? So 5% daily increase, your delta, is a, is a nice number. So when you're made with £100 um, in your account, that's £5 every day. Really not that bad, right? That's a couple of trades. It could be like three. It could be one large trade of like 50 pips. It could be two trades of 25 pips or 10 small trades of five of five. <laughs> don't do 10. Don't catch five pips at a time, guys. Minimum catching 10 pips at a time. So five trades of 10 pips. Sheesh. Yeah. So if you're catching five pounds worth over 20 days, right? Because what's five pounds into hundred pounds? It's 20. So let's say we don't work Fridays because the market is winding down. Fridays are very boring. That means that in 20 days, you should have doubled your account size. You've had another 100 pounds, 0.02 lot size. You're up a boundary. So month two, the plan is to double it again. What's 5%? 200 pounds, of 200 pounds, it's 10 pounds. Okay, so 10 pounds over 20 days. We're still not working Fridays. 200 pounds. Doubled your account again, up 0.04 lot size. So you can see how this snowballs really quickly. You just have to be committed enough to do this for... 90 days. What is your 90 day game plan? You should have, you should have had this conversation with your mentor already. 
getting them, um, it's really important to get yourself started on a really nice, clear, consistent journey. What is your game plan? Where are you supposed to be financially in 90 days? And even if maybe you, you're a bit below your, your 90 day target, you've still done the work to get almost halfway there, right? So having a plan is super, super important. The point is, is that we want to be profitable as quickly as possible, taking in considerate risk management, being a safe, sophisticated trader. You know how I do. I'm safe, no risk. But there's no reason why we can't be hitting those figures. Okay. So with all that being said, what even is Forex? So I know a lot of us, um, we've heard about it. We've obviously started to invest in it, right? But sometimes we actually don't know what it means. And Forex literally means foreign exchange. It's just the two words put together. And it's an international financial market that is open 24 hours a day, five days a week. So we do not work on the weekends, ladies and gents. Um, and the market is open from 6 a.m. Sydney time. And then it closes 5 p.m. Uh, New York time Friday evening. Okay, so when it opens 6 a.m. Sydney time, that is actually Sunday evening for us at about 11 o'clock at night. That's when it opens. And then it will close on Friday at 5 p.m. So again, that's around 11 o'clock at night for us, or about 10, half 10 is usually when it closes um, on a Friday night. And it is a multi-trillion dollar industry. And this isn't just like multi-trillion, you know, across the year or across a few months. I think it's, was it 6.6 .6 now? 6.6 .6 trillion dollars is passing hands every single day. It's actually mental. And this is, this is the majority of it is the banks, right? So when we put our money into our banks and we see that little bit of interest at the end of the month, that is because they have been day trading with our money. Okay. And we see the tiniest amount of commission. That's them giving us a little thank you for letting them play with our money. Okay. So what we are doing is taking control over our money and you doing our own day trading so that we can be uh, growing our accounts at the rate that works for us. Is that making sense? Are you guys with me? I do talk really fast. So if I am going too fast, please tell me to slow down. Throw an emoji into the chat box if you're with me. I've got a thumbs up from Jess. Thank you. <laughs> you forget when you're talking to a screen, but actually it's like there are 30 people on the call. You kind of get a little bit nervous, guys. And I've done this for about like 10 weeks now doing this training and I love it every single time. I, I love teaching the new guys because um, this is the scariest part of the journey. You've dived into something that's brand new, pretty alien. And... Um, you know, I love I loved doing the hand-holding. I love to be there to support anyone who needs it. So if you have more questions, message me on Instagram, whatever time of day I'm here, okay? So this is the schedule. If you do not have this, or you don't, you know, you don't, you haven't seen this yet, take a screenshot if you can. Um, and this just shows you the times of the day that the, that the international markets are open, okay? So we have the Asian sessions. We've got Sydney and Tokyo sessions that are open here. And this time of the day is the quietest time of the day, mostly because London and New York and Europe are all asleep. So it has the lowest rate of volatility. Most of the currency pairs are kind of consolidating during this time. If you don't know what that means, you're gonna find out later on in this, in this presentation. But price is just moving in a sideways motion a lot of the time. There are different strategies to be trading during this session. So if you are a bit of a night owl and you, or maybe you work night shifts and you're going to have an hour or two, or maybe half an hour or 20 minutes, there are going to be strategies perfect for you to be trading this session. Okay. So this is the Asian session. And then what we have at around 5am in the morning between five and 8am is what's known as the accumulation session. Money is gearing up in preparation for the London daybreak. And therefore you're going to see a lot of injection into the Euro uh, currency pairs between five and 8 a.m. So if you are an early bird, waking up at 5 a.m. means you can catch your pips way before work starts, which I actually used to do back in the day before lockdown. It's a fantastic session to be trading. And again, great strategies to, to, to use then as well. So then we have 8 a.m. London daybreak. And as soon as 8 a.m. strikes, money is moving in with a lot of volatility um, because everyone's trying to catch the movement of the day. So usually we have people in the US who wait up, they're awake during the night just to catch maybe half an hour or an hour of the London daybreak session. That's how volatile and valuable it is in terms of international trading. 
And then you have, uh, later on in the afternoon, you have the New York session. So um, when, when the New York session opens, it is, you still got volatility, there's still movement in the market, but it does tend to wind down later on in the evening in preparation for the Asian session to open again. So it's a continuous cycle that's going on 24 hours a day from Sunday until Friday. And then, like I said, we don't work on the weekends. So we can enjoy our profits from the week or choose to reinvest that back into our trading accounts. Okay, and who is actually participating? Well, I've already said the banks are doing most of the movement. They control large currency reserves and they sit at the very top pushing money left, right and center. So when you see those big institutional moves, that is the banks manipulating the market. Okay, so they make up about like 80% of the market. And then we have the MCNs, which are the multi-channel networks. So they are buying the pound for the US dollar in really large quantities and then pushing it back into the US. So this is essentially the hedge funds and the fund managers. Okay. And for the rest of the market, it is us the retail traders, the regular Joes and the small businesses, you and me from our mobile phones or our laptops, if, if you are that way inclined. Um, but you know what, even though we, we make up a tiny proportion of the market, they absolutely love us because we are easy prey. They can see exactly where we are sitting in the market, where we've got our pending orders. So they find it very easy to take us out of the market in order to do the bigger moves. Okay, so this is why it's really important that we learn how to trade like the banks. Is this being recorded? Yes, it is. Oh, I'm so glad you're enjoying this. Yep, it's being recorded. I'm going to um, send this to all of the groups and I might pop it onto my YouTube as well. To you. Um, yeah, so it's really important that we learn how to trade like the banks. So when, we've, when we can see institutional moves, we know when is the best time to be getting involved or maybe avoiding these markets, okay? And you can't learn this off of YouTube. And I'm so glad you guys are here with me on this call because people need to stop going to YouTube for free information. The banks know that people want to learn this skill. You have to go to Harvard and Oxford and Cambridge to learn how to do this, right? It's a very elitist practice but people will try and cheat and learn for free off of the internet. Does not work. The banks know that they all trade the same way because they're all getting the same types of information in drips and droughts and it's a bit of a mishmash, right? But the fact that we are paying for a unified learning experience from verified professionals from around the world means that we have got this advantage. And that's why in this academy, we are long-term profitable traders, right? So we're in the right place, people. Okay, so what is actually happening here when we are engaging in the art of Forex or um, trading, should I say? So what we're doing is we're essentially buying one currency and selling the other. So for example, when you go on holiday and you may be, you know, you've done this a little bit lastminute.com and you actually have to exchange your, your pounds at the airport, right, commission. Um, but it's exactly the same thing. So you are trading your money for the other currency. And let's say you go away and you, know, you do your shopping, you buy your food, and then you come back and you exchange maybe those dollars or those euros that you have left over, you exchange it back into pounds. And you're gonna find that you actually receive a little bit less or maybe a bit more than you would have expected. And that's because the value for that currency has changed over that period of time that you were away. So this is exactly what we're doing in like matrix fast time over our mobile phones. And we have our broker who acts as the middleman. So we have to remember that when we are buying and selling currency pairs, we are never actually buying and selling ourselves. What we do is we are instructing our broker. They are buying and selling, and then we get the profits or they get the commission. Does that make sense? So when we say, <laughs> when people say, oh, I'd like to buy gold, right? You're never actually buying like a boolean of gold. Unless you go to Harrods, you're not gonna do that. What you do is you are instructing your broker that gold is gonna be going in this direction. They are the ones who then buy and then you pay them or you receive the profits. Do you see what I'm trying to say here? So it's just kind of de debunking the myths of what's happening in all kinds of trading. So if somebody says to you, oh yeah, um, I would like to, I'm thinking I'm going to buy some gold. And it's like, hmm, do you actually know what you're doing? Because you're never actually got a bit of gold sitting in, in a safe. Do you know what I mean? So you're literally paying somebody to do what we're doing now, the day trading. Does that make sense? Is everyone with me? I'm going into more detail today, but I think this is important because <laughs> some of us not be knowing. Some, someone put something into the chat. Another, another emoji, please. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Great. Thank you. 
amazing, amazing, cool. So anything that is paired with the United States dollar is known as a major currency pair. So for example, you've got AUD USD, uh, USD JPY, uh, GBP USD, NZD USD, USD CAD, right, the Canadian dollar. Those are all our majors. And then we have our minors or our cross pairs. So anything that is paired without the United States. <laughs> So, for example, oh, we've got a microphone on. Guys, can you meet your mics, please? Oh, we've got 54 people in the chat. That is amazing, guys. Nice to see you all. I hope you're all doing good wherever you are. Um, yeah, so anything that's not paired with the USD is known as a minor or a cross pair. So you've got AUDJPY, so the Aussie dollar against the yen. Or we've got, um, like, EuroCAD. You've got... Um, you know, uh, uh, NZD Chef, for example, there are loads of different combinations and you're going to uh, really get to know these currency pairs quite intimately. They all have their own kind of personality and the way that they move is so individual. Some will move in a similar style, but I like to think of them as having their own personality. So really get to know your favorites so that when you are, you know, doing your own um, analysis on the charts, you can understand what they're most likely to do. How are they likely to respond? They will continue to do the same thing again and again and again. And the, the quicker you can get to know a couple of currency pairs in that way, the easier your trading life is going to be. Okay. So then we have our exotics. So if you're interested in maybe some, some different kind of currency combinations that include maybe the Hong Kong dollar, the South African rand, or maybe the Mexican peso, um, you can be trading those. So by all means, do your research and you know, understand again, what is their personality when they're moving on the charts? How can you um, get to know them and then see the opportunities in order to make money from them? Okay. We also then have our commodities, which include oil, gas, metals. We talk about that gold. You can also trade silver as well. You've also got comp company stocks and crypto. So, you know, there's something for everyone. Maybe if you're not about that Forex life, maybe you're, you're just more interested in Bitcoin. We can also be day trading Bitcoin guys. And, you know, I'm Academy have all of these different um, strategies for you. So do shop around and take a look on go live and see what, oh, Kermit the Frog is going wild over here. Um, do your research and you know find what works best for you because I promise you the more you enjoy whatever you're trading, the more enjoyable your experience is going to be. No audio. Oh, Victor, you probably have to connect your audio. Can everyone can hear me because everyone's nodding along. So yeah, <laughs> cool. Okay, so when you start to look at the charts, right, you're gonna be seeing these. These are candlesticks. So what we're looking at are candlestick charts. Okay. And each candle tells us something very, very specific about what's happened in money over that period of time. And each candle will represent um, that time frame at which you're looking at. So if you're looking at a 15 minute chart, each candle will, will represent or, or, or um, demonstrate, should I say, what happened to currency or the value of currency during that 15 minute window. So you can look at a day chart and every candle represents what happened in that day. Or you can have a one minute chart. So each candle is one minute. Very, very volatile, but quite exciting if that's a bit of you, okay? So you have green candles, which are our buy candles, and red candles, which indicate a sell candle. So price has, uh, has gone down in that period of time, or price has gone up in that period of time. And it's, this might be a bit confusing to all of our new starters, but I'm gonna break this down for you. So if you don't have this, you can do your own very nice arty sketch, or you can just screenshot it and save it for later. This lady's too pretty. I'm just going to mute. Victor didn't have um, sound, but now he's got his microphone on. <laughs> nice to see you. <clears throat> um, so the wicks, this is what's known as the wick. So we have this thin area here, which is known as the wick, and this larger area, which is known as the body. Both tell us something very, very different. So with a buy candle, we know that price has to open at the bottom of the body of the candle and it closes at the top, right? Because it's gone up in price. So it opens here. So at the start of this 15 minute window and it closed at the end of the 15 minute window there. Okay, so that's actually where, uh, what happened to the change in value. What the wicks represent is where price was able to explore during that time. So it kind of shows us the boundaries for price, where it was trapped in that moment of time. So let's say price opened at the bottom of this candle and actually it pulled down. It was being pulled down with some bearish momentum here. And then maybe it actually pushed back up and it wanted to, the, the price wanted to get higher. 
and then it pulled back down and actually ended up closing around this area. Is this making sense? So it's the same, but the opposite with a sell candle. So price opens at the top, maybe it pushed up a little bit, maybe it pulled back down, but then actually we had so a bit more bullish momentum, maybe towards the end of that 15 minute window, and it closed at the bottom of the body of the candle. Is this making sense? Is everyone with me? This is making so much sense, yay! Yes, hey Sam, nice to see you, Sam has got it. Yeah, the candles can be really, really confusing, but once you get it, oh, Rudina's on the call as well. Nice to see so many trade creatives here, guys. Nice to see you. Um, yeah, so even though these may feel really confusing, you're going to get to understand these. And once you start to, um, to, to, to look at these more, um, you're going to just end up seeing the patterns and your brain is going to be making the associations. You're training your brain now, now that you're doing this education, you are <laughs> lost with a bit with the candle. Don't worry, we're going to go over it a lot more. Don't worry. You're going to be training your brain to understand what all of these mean. And these come in many different shapes and sizes. And again, each candle represents something very specific. And it will tell you what to do next. When's the best time to enter into the market? You don't need all the fancy indicators. Sometimes the best trading happens with lines and just the candles, right? Cool. So, now we're gonna move on to our skills and drills. Guys, we are gonna head over to TradingView. If you guys haven't been onto TradingView yet, let's go. Let me just share my screen with you over here. Now TradingView is a fantastic online platform. Am I showing my screen? Can you guys see my screen? Can you see TradingView here? Someone tell me if you can see my screen. Yes, cool, cool, cool. Thanks guys. Yeah, TradingView is a fantastic platform for doing your analysis. Now we all are gonna be using MetaTrader 4 to be placing our trades anyway, but I do not use MT4 to do my analysis. No, I use TradingView and it's, um, it's just so reliable. Um, it's receiving its information very quickly from the brokers that it uses. Um, and this is kind of in terms of like international standards for, for um, this industry, TradingView is kind of a must. So if you haven't got an account, I would really get one now. I actually pay for the full version. I think it's like 70 pounds for the year, but pretty much pays for itself, okay? So, um, and it just allows you to have a few more bells and whistles. I can set alerts and things like that. So um, yes, you can have the free version, but just be ready for a lot of ads, kind of annoying. But I don't have that. So um, let me get rid of my indicators. We're just gonna focus solely on the candles here. And we're looking at the 15 minute time frame, but I think what I want to do is take a look at the one hour because I like to do my analysis on the one hour time frame. Now, who can tell me what kind of movement are we seeing here? What's the trend? Who can tell me what the trend is here? Where is my chat box? Cool guys, who can tell me what the trend is? Nice, one, five, three, two, one, one has got it. Shakira is also there too. I can see, Alicia, I can see what you mean. I'm gonna break this down. Cool, nice one guys. So what we have here is actually some sideways movement, otherwise known as an area of consolidation. So we can see that price is kind of waffling, it's bouncing up and down, up and down in a very specific zone. I can literally box this zone, taking it from the top of that wick there. So you can see my crosshair, I'm looking at this area here. So that was an area of resistance and price is literally bouncing between this area, right? I mean, you could say that we've got a bit of, um, bullish momentum here. Actually, no, you, you actually could, <laughs> but I'm looking specifically at this zone. Okay. So yes, we have got some sideways movement and what we're waiting for it to do is to make a decision on where it wants to go. We like to be trading with the trend. We want to go with the flow of the river. This is just a little bit painful and we're just waiting for price to make a decision on where it wants to go. Okay, a lot, of, a lot of currencies are kind of recovering from um, coronavirus and the economic crash that happened as a result of that. So we're finding that a lot of currency pairs are doing these big swings and they're now consolidating because they're back to where they should have been originally. And now it's time for the, for the markets to decide if that currency pair is going to go up in value or continue on their downwards trends maybe. 
Guys, Des Ame is in the house. Des, so nice to see you. I hope you're doing good. Guys, Des Ame is our chairman. He was recently become chairman 25, which means he's affected the lives of like 500 people or something. It's more than that, isn't it? Tell, tell me, I can't, I can't hear you. I'm going to unmute you. <laughs> Um, Hi Des, how are you doing? Not too bad, thank you. Sorry, I didn't. I, I just tried to sneak in incognito. You know, <laughs> I see everything. I see everything. Oh man, well, listen, I don't want to take up too much time from this session at all, um, guys. What I really want to say is that you know this this session is absolutely exceptional. Jessica Walker is one of the best teachers that we have in the whole academy, um, and what she does is genuinely just from her heart, because she gets, there's no benefit to her for running this whole session for everybody and everybody's wow. teams, for the whole academy, but she does so simply because she just enjoys teaching and helping people. But the standard of what she does is absolutely sensational. We're currently um, starting a campaign to make Jessica a, um, an educator. So please help me with that by just um, adding on Instagram and tagging her in the posts. I'm signposting um, Jason Brown and Spieler there as well. Um, she's just absolutely phenomenal. And if you agree, if you agree with me that this this session already, you know, what about 30 minutes in has been impactful? Can you just put a one in the chat box? Just blow up the chat box for Jessica Walker. Absolutely phenomenal servant leader, constantly giving, giving, giving. Um, I'm just nothing but nothing but praise, nothing but praise. Um, so Jessica, keep doing what you're doing. Nothing but love and respect. Thank you so much. I feel like I'm going to cry. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. No, it's, it's always so nice to see you on these calls. So thank you. I really appreciate you jumping on. It means a lot. Um, like I said, I love doing these sessions. And like I said, the beginning is the hardest time. Trust me, I've shed my tears. It's confusing. It feels clunky and awkward half the time. We don't know what we're doing. So I totally get it. And the point of this beginner session is to make this journey as easy as possible for you. Um, so again, if you have any questions, just let me know and we can definitely go through them. Thank you so much, Des. Cool beans. So yes, we've got our sideways consolidation movement here, moving not really sure where it wants to go, but you know, great opportunity for us to jump in when it decides to break out of this area. If you don't know about Price Trap, I would really recommend going on to go live and watching Christopher, um, Ter <laughs> Christopher Derrick's uh, Price Trap sessions, his recordings. He created the Price Trap strategy and honestly, it is so simple. There's no reason why you can't be a beginner's basics trader and still not be earning. Do you know what I mean? Um, very simple beginner's strategy and you can still be earning whilst you're learning. So make sure you do your, do your research on go live, okay guys? Cool, so we've got some sideways movement here, ladies and gents, and let's go a little bit further back in time. Sheesh, what have we got here? Who can tell me what's happened in this area? Who can identify this trend? Downwards, nice, Alicia is in there. Yes, nice guys, nice. Well done. Yeah, we've got some serious downwards momentum here. Like we've got this very strong bearish trend happening right now. So again, let's see here, we had this area of consolidation, boom. Another area of consolidation, boom. So this again, CAD CHF has its way of moving that you know maybe Euro GBP, it, it, I know for a fact it would not act like this, right? So once you get to know these currency pairs, you can then take advantage of that and know when the best time will be for you to enter into a trade and how to recognize how it flows, how it likes to flow as the river, if that makes sense. So yeah, we had a really strong bearish momentum here. And then let's see what, okay, we'll take a look here. Oh, nice, gosh. This chart is doing, it's doing wonders for me today. So if that's a downtrend, then yes, guys, you've got it. This is an uptrend. And it's characterized by, the, by these uh, higher highs and higher lows, right? So we have a high established here, it pulls down to a low, and then we have a new higher high, because this high is higher than this high, right? And then it pulls back down again for a new higher low and an even further higher high. And it continues so on and so forth until we have our reversal, which happened here. Massive institutional move, look at that. Massive rejection wick to the downside, taking out a lot of the um, retail traders, right? Those, the people who uh, go to YouTube for free info, they were all taken out there. You can, you can tell because of the wick. They saw all of those pending orders because people wanted it to continue going up. It took them all out. 
and then moved to the downside. Okay, so when we're using a uh, trading view, we have a specific um, set, set of tools that we can be using to do our analysis, right? I love using horizontal rays. And if you don't know what that is, if you go on to, it should look like this, on the left hand side in this panel here, you're going to have a line with two dots. So you can use that to draw trend lines any which way and you can- It's gonna hurt. Hello. <laughs> Well, I'm just going to mute that. Nice to hear you, though. <laughs> um, you can, you know, you can adjust these to make them look however you like. You're going to have a little um, toolkit here, so you can adapt how this looks for you. Or what I like to do if I'm going to be uh, marking out zones, I like to do if well, if you've got a MacBook, it's Option H. So you hold down the Option button and click H. So some of you might want to give that a go. If you've got your trading view open alongside with this call, which I think is a, is a helpful idea, then um, give that a go. For some of you, it might be Alt H if you're using um, a, Windows, a Windows computer or laptop. Um, but for Apple, it is Option H. Okay, so what we can do is we can mark out zones really very quickly so that we can um, do some very quick analysis. So let's do this together. I'm gonna do a little bit of a price trap strategy here. Oh, sweet, Jess says, Windows is Alt H. Thank you so much. Yeah, I haven't used Windows for a very long time. So um, that's really helpful to know. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this option H or Alt H together now to mark up a zone. You could be on CAD CHF with me here if you want to, but feel free to use another currency pair. Um, and I'm just going to mark out the tops of the wicks. I want to see where um, is price struggling, right? That is my clue to hack the matrix. That is what I want to do. The market is always giving us clues and it's with the rejection wicks, right? So I like to go, well, <laughs> I like to go. The strategy is you go from wick to body, okay? And I'm going to take us from the top of this wick to the body because that also is able to kind of go through this area here where we have all these candles using this area as a ceiling. It's trying to break through, but it just can't, okay? It wanted to come up, actually tried about three times to push through this area, boom, boom, boom. I suppose this one as well, but it's now rejecting, okay? So it may decide to go in again, or it could come to the downside and use this area as a floor. So this we've marked up as our floor. So again, I'm gonna go from wick to body, that is our zone. We have trapped price in this area. When it decides to break out is when we are going to go in for our move. Okay, so it can either come out this way or it can come out that way. Okay, yes, we could be trying to catch pips in this area of consolidation. However, price is too uncertain as to where it wants to go. And you're far better off by actually practicing patience and waiting for this currency pair to break out in any which way, and then maximizing on that trade, on that trend, should I say. Is this making sense? So if you wanna be using arrows, again, go into this top um, label here, and your arrow is going to be there. If you wanna be drawing vertical lines, um, maybe if you have your indicators and you wanna kind of marry up, uh, what is happening across your different um, viewpoints, then you can be using option V. Option V or Alt V. Okay, so if you want to see what's happening across all of your different indicators, you want to see some, some nice confirmations maybe, then Alt V is perfect to just get that really married up. I'm new to this, so quite alien to me. Sorry, I'm doing my best to digest. Absolutely fine. This is gonna take practice, right? The more that you're on these charts doing your analysis, the quicker you're gonna get. And honestly, when I look at the chart first thing in the morning, I'm like, boom, boom, boom. And it's gonna get so much easier. You just have to practice. Okay, so we have got Alt H or Option H for our horizontal line. We've also got V for our vertical. Really, really very helpful. And that's pretty much in terms of like the basics that you really need kind of done. You've also got um, your trend lines. If you want to be drawing your trend lines, really, really simple. And maybe if you want a bit more information as to what you're seeing, right? I love using this. I love an info line. So it will tell you how many candles and how many hours or days have passed in that time. So if I want to draw a trend line going from this, actually, let's do something better. Let's um, 
look back in time. I want to see what the historic trend is. Okay, so maybe I want to look at this high to this low. Okay, let me get rid of those lines. So I want to look at this high to this low. I'm like, hmm, this is a really nice downtrend here. I wonder how long it took to make this move. So I'm going to take my, my um, info line and take it from the top of this move down to the bottom to where it broke. So that is where it crossed this trend line. 129 one hour bars, seven days and nine hours. So you can then kind of make and have an idea of how long maybe you'll be waiting for a particular trade or maybe how long you could be in a trade for by understanding what the kind of rate of the movement is for, for the currency pairs that you're using. Do you get to do, <laughs> somebody's written in the chat box. I don't understand. Do you, go again and I will answer. I'll answer the question, a bit more info, <laughs> please. Cool. Um, yeah, so very, very helpful if you're wanting to see how much time has passed or will be passing, okay? Do you get the info line with the basic trading view? Oh, I would assume so. I don't know, but I have it on mine, which probably isn't helpful. So um, for anyone who isn't paying for, yes, it's there. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, Kem. Yeah, so you do get, um, you do get the info line with the basic package or base the basic the free version should i say you then also have um rectangles really really good for marking out zones so it might be the brush that's there so if you're seeing the brush you can actually go down and click rectangle and you can use this again to mark out areas of resistance okay so it just gives you some maybe some more clear visuals um, so that you can see where price has been reacting before and then you can use it to go back in time has price reacted in this area boom there it is right really helpful and guys i'm not a very like fast learner i'm a very visual learner so um by having these tools with a few few colors here and there makes things a whole lot easier we then have the fibonacci tool now i'm not going to go into too much detail about it but it is a really helpful tool to have in your arsenal. Um, so funnily enough, Fibonacci exists in nature, but it also occurs in the financial markets. Don't ask me why, it just does. But we would be fools to ignore it, okay? So what we can do is take our Fibonacci tool and let's say we're focusing on this trend here. So try not to just be very liberal with the Fibonacci tool and just put it wherever which way because we want it to be in relation to something particular okay maths in itself is very particular so we need to make sure that when we're using this tool we're looking at a very specific area in order to get specific results does that make sense so if you want to know um, where there are possible areas of resistance use it in relation from the high or the uh, to the low of the move so let's say my eye is on this area. I want to find the areas of resistance in relation to, that's a very important part of the phrase, in relation to this move, from this high to this low, okay? So I'm gonna take my Fibonacci tool from this high to this low, that is the move. And I'm gonna draw it out so we can see the areas of resistance. So we know in Fibonacci's law that the 382, the 618 and the 786 are incredibly important. Don't ask me why, it just is. And the market will always return to these areas. So we can see here from the high to the low, we see that price got stuck at the 382. Price broke through the 618. And this is when this is why we do it from the high to the low, because this is where price reversed and continued to go on an uptrend. And then it got stuck at the 618. Look at that rejection candle right there. I'm going to use another tool here. I'm going to get a circle, the ellipse. And what you do is you click. You draw a line, so as if you're going to draw a line, click, and then you open it out to create a circle. So it's not like your standard, you know, Windows Paint where you would actually just like draw out the circle and it would just automatically come out. You have to do um, make the line and then expand the circle, if that makes sense, okay? So you can see that rejection candle there on the 618. Classic move, perfect use of Fibonacci. And again, it wants to continue on this downtrend. So I'd be very confident to set a sell stop here at the 786, I make this green for a reason. Perfect point for entry time and time again. 
Even so, we see this area, it's touched this area before, and I know that the 786 is an area of resistance. So I wait to see how it's reacting to it, okay? Because I know that price wants to come, to come down. So I wouldn't have entered here. I would not have entered here, because usually it's on the third touch of the 786. Does it then break through and continue on the trend? Okay, the reason that I know this is just because I've got a lot of time ahead of you guys. I've just been doing this for a lot longer, so I know how the charts work. Um, so the more that you're doing this, you're going to be recognizing the patterns, and like the, the way that money moves, basically. Okay, so don't feel overwhelmed. This is just something you're going to learn with time. So that is the Fibonacci tool. So, so great and very, very helpful. Now, if you're entering into trades, what time is it? 15 minutes. So if you are entering into trades and you want to see uh, visually where you are sitting in the market and where your air, where your risk or your um, profits are going to be. I love using this tool here, the long and short position. I like to have a very clear visual on where, uh, where my trades are. So sometimes, you know, if I've got a few too many trades open, I'm like, Oh, I can't remember what I was doing with this one. I'll have them all flagged here and I will be able to see the trade. So let's say I've gone in for a one-to-one -one trade. So 30 pips for 30 pips and they refer to it as ticks here. So 30 pips is, is essentially 300 pipettes or 300 ticks. Okay. So there it is. That is my trade. 30 pips for 30 pip risk. So you can see it nice and visually. And when you set it, for example, um, This is really nice, actually. I want to show you an example. Here we go. Ha ha. So let's say you entered up here. What this tool will automatically do is show you where your trade is. It will show you that diagonal arrow. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but every time I go over it, it's showing me all the info. So it will show you that diagonal arrow and it will kind of mark up a bit darker where your trade currently is. So it wants to show you actually where you're currently sitting. So that's why it's really, really helpful. And let's say, for example, if I, if I actually entered in this area here, that you've still got quite a way to go, but that gray arrow is there pointing down. So it's telling you, hey, you're in profit which is really nice. That's why I love using this tool. And this is why TradingView is so good. They just want you to be profitable, guys. And it works exactly the same way if you are going for a long position. So if you are buying this currency pair, then you can do the same going in the opposite direction. And it works, it just works an absolute treat. So if you're more of a visual person, um, you can really be using this to, to assist your, your learning and to make your trading just a lot more enjoyable. So you can see here, it's telling you, oh, you've set your trade at this green line. Well, you were in profit, but now the arrow is pointing down. So I'm technically in drawdown. Okay. Um, again, if you want to be measuring, which is what I do all the time. So I like to measure how many pips difference there are between zones, for example, I will take this ruler and all you do is right click. Um, well, actually, no, that's a complete lie. You um, hold the shift key and you can then draw it down or draw it up. So there are two ways you can do this. You can just click the measurement tool and click and drag and it will do that for you. Or alternatively, you can just hold down the shift key and um, it will come up for you and you can do your measurements. So again, it will try and show you things in ticks. So what it's saying there is um, that is a 40, what was it, 45 pips up. So it will show you 451 ticks, for example. But we would look at that as 45 pips. Is this making sense? I'm, hope, I'm hoping I'm going through things okay for everyone, just because I know TradingView can be quite overwhelming. Um, but yeah, I hope this is good. Um, we also have stay in drawing mode. Really, really helpful if you are drawing a few trend lines at a time. So maybe I want to um, just remind myself where I am taking my trade. So what I can do is click this lock tool, which means that I'm going to be stuck in arrow mode. So I'm going to do this. I can then do that. And then I can do that. Oh, that, that's when it gets annoying because <laughs> you can't click off. Okay. So that just helps in, in a bit more of a sinuous journey when you are trying to do some, some tracking for your trades, if that makes sense. Um, just, just a little helpful tool. And if you want to get rid of everything because it's getting in the way and you can't see what you're doing anymore, remove drawings, nice and clean again. Um, and if you have your indicators, you can choose to hide or show them just by double clicking on the chart. Oh, <laughs> she says, there we go. Okay, so if, say, for example, things are getting a little bit messy and you can't see what you're doing anymore, just double click, 
it all goes away. And then you can use this uh, reset chart button, just make it all pretty again. And then if you want your indicators back, double click, there they are. Okay, really, really simple. And I know that on your, um, on the free version, you can set alerts, but you're kind of restricted as to what you can do. So when you have your toolkit panel here, you then have the alarm clock, but it might not be like that if you're in the free version, I can't remember. Um, but you simply click that and you can choose how you want to be alerted. If it's crossing up, if it's crossing down, um, maybe if it closes. So I like to do candle close um, once per bar. So you're not gonna get a hundred notifications if it's going up and down in 15 minutes. So if it closes outside of that area, that is when I will get notified because then I know that my um, resistance area has been broken. So it's time for me to go in and do a bit more of a deeper analysis and see, hmm, do I wanna take this trade or does it need more time? Um, let me just look in the chat box quickly. Can you also help with bounce forex trading strategy? Okay, so bounce back is a particular strategy. And if you've paid for the bounce back, then um, you've got access to all of the training videos on there. I have the elite package, so I do really want to get into bounce back properly. I haven't managed to get around to it yet, but I did actually try and look at it today. And I was like, no, I can't do this right now. I have to dedicate like two or three hours to really go into beast mode with it. So probably at like 11 o'clock at night is what I'll be doing, so. Um, Okay, on, oh, Kem says only one alert at a time on the free version, yeah. I have 10 alerts going like all at once because I'm crazy, um, but it's, it's really great. It's so helpful. Thanks for this. Yes, we're gonna have the recording. Um, what time is it? Okay, we've got 10 minutes. There are still 56 people on the call. Really, really, I'm so glad to see you guys all here. I hope this has been helpful. I like to do my hotline bling you know, so if anyone has any questions and they want me to unmute their mic so you can ask the question to the classroom, then um, let me know in the chat box so I can unmute you. This is actually my favorite part of the session. It's taken us a few weeks to get this down. So hopefully today, are we gonna have somebody to ask a question? Let me know. There are 55 of us in the call and not one question. Yeah, sure. Don't worry. That's fine. Again, if you have any questions, you can message me privately on Instagram, but it's nice to open this up as a classroom setting um, as if we weren't all stuck in our, in our houses. <laughs> okay. Um, I will wait for some questions to come through. How do I decide my stop loss? So guys, it's really important. And this is, this is some real talk now for the people at the back. Okay. When we are doing go live, and we are trading with our educators, or maybe our mentor has kindly given us, um, you know, a trading setup for us to be using whilst we're, whilst we're um, still learning. It's very important that you do your own risk management because what's gonna be good for one of our seven figure earners is not gonna be good for our small accounts. So it's important to decide actually how much are you willing to risk per trade? Now, I'm a very safe trader. I don't like risking more than 2% per trade. That is just me. I'm also very com uh, comfortable, let's say, with just setting a 30 pip stop loss and leaving it at that. So again, that's come, that's, to be honest, I've been doing this for like three, uh, nine months now. So my relationship with money has really changed because I've had to work to change my mindset. If I see drawdown, I don't feel the anxiety. I don't feel the fear. Um, I let it go. And I'm more than happy to lose 30 pips, you know, because we'd have the strategies in order to earn that back and more. So I almost welcome a stop loss because it means, okay, I now have another opportunity to jump back in with a bit more of a better analysis maybe. So don't fear the stop loss. However, do what is right for you. So don't, um, <laughs> don't have a massive stop loss if your account size or your mentality can't handle a massive stop loss. Okay. If you know for a fact that you are going to cry, if you lose hundred pounds in one trade, please don't set that as your stop loss because you're going to get defeated. You're going to, um, feel very ill <laughs> for a bit. Trust me, I've been there. You are, you're going to tell yourself trading doesn't work. You're going to beat yourself down. You're going to quit. And then you're, you're going to stay in your, in your financial cycle. Okay. The smaller stop losses, the better. I would much rather hit five small stop losses than have one or two massive stop losses that wipe my account. Cause then that's like another three months work I have to do to build that back up. So, um, you know, 
we're acting as our own bank account. So make sure you are protecting your money like your own bank account. Really, really important. You have 30 pips stop loss on all your trades? Pretty much. It sounds a bit flippant because it is. Like I've done, I've done this now for long enough that I feel very confident, first of all, with the strategies that I use. And then also I've changed my mindset to not be fearful of hitting stop loss. So, um, you know, it is what it is. You're going to develop this mindset as you go along. But, you know, 30 pips as a basic is kind of a good level for stop losses. It gives it a bit more breathing space than like a 10 pip stop loss would, unless you're like really scalping. Um, but yeah, 30 pip works treat for me. But if anything, 50 pips would be okay. Just don't, just don't go any further than 50 pips if you don't know why. So sometimes people would like to go, so say you're maybe entering in for a, ooh, okay, this is a good example. <clears throat> So let's say we're going in for a sell. You're trying to enter maybe around down here. Let me actually use our short position so you guys can see this and I can put into action what I'm talking about. So um, here we go. You are seeing this area of consolidation here and you're thinking, hmm, I'm going to enter maybe below. I'm going to set a sell stop below this area of resistance to catch, what is that, 30 pips? No, it's not. <laughs> let's, let's go, we're trying to catch 30 pips, for example. Okay, so a one for one risk to reward ratio would be 30 pips for 30 pips, right? But let's say actually you think, hmm, this is a rejection candle. Price is not likely to come back above this area. So what you do is you then set your stop loss all the way, maybe a few pips above here. Guys, that's nearly 200 pips, right? And where is price at the moment? It's like halfway up. This is a lot of drawdown over how many days? Let's get our info line. Where did we enter? We entered around here. Where is price now? Seven days of drawdown. Now, I don't know about you, but that's very boring. And a lot of anxiety and a lot of work for virtually not that much money. When really, you could have been stopped out around here, but in that time that you have, in all this time that you spent waiting for this trade to come down, you could have taken about 20 trades and still been profitable on about 15 of them, right? So you would for sure have made this back and more. Seven days of stress and, you know, not very fun. And trading is fun, guys. This, I don't know about you, but I love this hobby. It's so much fun, so long as we make it fun for ourselves. So uh, try and be anxiety free, do yourself a favor, have a small stop loss and just enjoy the ride. If you're in drawdown, I'm still smiling. I'm like, woohoo, isn't this great? I'm still trading. So I don't know, maybe it just shows that I've been uh, doing this for maybe too long or I haven't left my house in a while, but um, trading is so much fun, guys. If you love trading, if you're new, but you're already enjoying it, put something into the chat box right now. I hope I'm not the only crazy person here, but guys, you know what we say? Crazy people make crazy money. Am I right or am I right? Cool, we've got four minutes left. Does anybody have any burning questions? <laughs> Shakira, enjoying, enjoying is a strong word. <laughs> Guys, we've got to enjoy what we're doing. Otherwise, what's the point? We've got to enjoy it. Otherwise, it's like having your other nine to five that you just hate. We never want to go into our office at home, wherever we are, with resentment and fear. Trading is a fun ride. Um, what are your settings for the stock and the RSI? Guys, if you don't know these indicators, get to know, because they are fantastic for telling you about um, the volatility and like the speed at which uh, money is moving and the strength of that currency as well. So I like to have my um, RSI at seven, so the measurement is seven, and obviously it's looking at the close of the last seven candles. So I have it at the seven, and I also have my safe zone, my consolidation area, at the 60 and the 40. So to change that, you just go into the cog, Length is seven, 60 and 40, okay? And the RSI, I don't really change, but my MACD I have on uh, three, 10, 16 close, I think. Um, but the RSI, this is fine. The RSI is better for kind of looking at long, what's happening on the long-term basis. And the RSI here is better at looking on the short term. So really I look at the RSI when I'm on the 15 minute time frame, And this stochastic tells me what's happening over a longer period of time, if that makes sense. That's kind of how I use them. Um, and they are, if you're doing market execution, fantastic in terms of telling you uh, where to go. So 
although we think that you know we're in the oversold regions and yes we know that this has to come back up actually what it's meaning is you know this is the strength indicator okay so it's telling us not that price is weak and it's going to have to come back up but actually the downwards the downwards um it's got a lot of downward strength there's strength in the bears at the moment so it can continue to um go in this downwards motion even though it's flicking back up because it's still in these in these downward regions is this making sense um based i'm not sure purple boxes on my screen do i need to press a button purple boxes oh these ones yes you won't have these if you want to, you're gonna have you're gonna see like this naked chart like this what you need to do is click onto the function or maybe no don't use that one indicators and strategies you then type in rsi relative strength index and it's also got stochastic rsi there as well if you like to have an ichimoku cloud guys i am very visual i love my ichimoku um i've already got one here so it won't allow me to do that here she is love an ichimoku um what about the bounce strategy enlightenment i don't know yet i haven't gone into bounce back properly so next week okay i'll do that for next week how does that sound we'll talk about bounce back next week Thank you so much. I understood the beginning, but when I saw the charts, I was lost. I hope you recorded this. Yes, this is recorded. This, guys, I don't expect you to get this. This is your first lesson for some of you. I don't expect you to get it right away. I can't teach Forex in an hour, right? You can't learn all about Forex in an hour. So um, go over this as many times as you need. There are loads of beginner sessions on Go Live. If you don't know Ralph Danker, he's on the Forex Basics check his videos out. He's fantastic at really breaking things down really easily for you. Um, and you know, I do this every week. Please message me if there's something that I missed and you want me to go over. Um, we haven't calculated pips today, but we've done that for about 10 weeks now. So I think you're good. Um, but if you want to do a, a pip calculation session, that is one of our skills and drills. We just be drilling trading view. We didn't get onto MetaTrader 4, but I think, you know, there's a lot to unpack here with TradingView. There's a lot here. Um, so next week, we are going to do a MetaTrader 4 session. What's a buy stop and a sell stop? What's a buy limit and a sell limit? Um, how can we add more quotes onto our symbols page? All of those things that can actually be really confusing. Um, it's really important that we get to know our trading app um, as, nice, as, best, as best as we can, basically. What are my messaging platforms, Insta and YouTube? Yes, so you can message me on Instagram at Trade Creatives. I'm gonna put the link in here now. Um, W.instagram.com forward slash Trade Creatives. That is our group, the group that I've created, a wonderful family of artists and freelancers who all get that the hustle is real. Um, and yeah, so you can find me over there or you can find me on YouTube on Jessica's Trading Journal. So I basically document the good, bad and the ugly of my trading journey over on YouTube. I try not to do any teaching on there because I'm a firm believer that people should not go to YouTube to learn how to do this. So I try not to teach there. I literally just do a bit of like talking and like sometimes crying Well, like one time, you know, it's important to see the journey because it, you, guys, this is going to be the ride of your life. Okay. And when you get through the other side and you start seeing those consistent profits, life is sweet. Okay. So it is two minutes past nine. I want to respect your time. I've loved being on the call with you guys tonight. This has been such a fun session. Yes, these are weekly. I do this every single Thursday. So I will see you guys next week, but don't be afraid to message me. If you're in any of the AFA, the Trade Excel, um, the James Filtness groups, anything, just let them know that you enjoyed this session today so that we have more people join us for more skills and drills next week. Skills and drills, skills and drills. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. I'm going to be um, a glorified DJ again and put my music on because you know I love my music. But I hope you guys enjoyed this session and I will see you same time next week. I don't even know if anyone can hear my music. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jess. So nice to see you. Uncle Bob is on. <laughs> hey, Pammy, I didn't see you there. Oh, Uncle Bob is on. That's what you mean. Oh, guys, Bob Proctor is on. Go on to Go Live now to listen to the main man himself, Bob Proctor. Fantastic mindset development um, and financial advice. He's great. Go over there. I'm going to head over there right now, so I'll see you on there.
Thanks, guys. Nice to see you. James, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> what? Oh, hello. You're talking to me. Ah! I can't hear you. Are you, are you talking to me? Let me unmute you. There we go. Hi there, Jess. Yeah, good to see you. Hello Hi. there. Um, I just wanted to, when I meant by the IDs, I meant the uh, Zoom, the Zoom meeting IDs, basically. So um, on the weekly IDs, um, are they sent out via your Instagram link that you, that you sent, that you said it would be there, or are they sent out via another platform? So yeah, I put them on my, on my Instagram, my YouTube, oh, okay. um, but yeah. this is Great. my personal Zoom, and I feel like the whole internet has my Zoom now. Oh so. my goodness, I got this through um, Jade, through uh, Des, Des's company, okay. basically, Amy Finance. Uh, I'm not sure if you know Jade anyway, but she's with Des, um, Amy on Amy Finance. Oh, nice. So, um, so uh, yeah, so it's, it's, so you send them out via your Instagram and then we just get it from there. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. But this is, this is my Zoom link. So if you, um, you know that I'm doing a class and you can use this one, I'm not going to change it. Fantastic. That's great. All right, Jessica. Okay. Love to nice see you. To Thanks see so you. much. See Take you care. later. Bye-bye now. Bye, everyone. I'm going to end the call now. Thank you so much for coming and I will see you on the trading floor.